All right, I'm going to get started in just a couple minutes. And if you're tuning in, feel free to say, hey, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know who's here. Um, we'll have like some something kind of fun and different today. And I'm going to kind of try to keep it short and snappy. But um, I'm going to do a little bit of illustration, but also give you some tips on how I am making the multicolor palettes and um, the wet br brush palettes from images. So it's going to be some good little tips and a lot of you guys will probably be really familiar with that. Um, let me go to my da, 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 start here. Sorry, I'm going to find my um, my foundation. There's a link down below for the impressionist technique and then the wet brush technique. So um, if you're not familiar with it, you can go to my website and I've got um, a really great tutorials on all the ins and outs of this. But the the wet paint mixer brush technique and the multicolor impressionist brush technique is something that I use all the time. And I'm going to show you how I make like a little mini palette from a photograph. So from an image and just some of the little tips and tricks that I do to like get the nicest colors from them if I am taking some inspiration from an image. Um, oh my gosh, you're up in Wisconsin now, Rhoda. That's awesome. Um, do you, you have to tell me if you have any snow, but I think, um, I think you said, I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think you said you spent half the year in Texas and then maybe half of the year up in Wisconsin. Um, but hopefully you're having a fun time. Oh, and I'm going to show you guys what was my original inspiration to begin with. So let's see here. I think my delay is just a little, not, not too much. If anything goes on with the um, video quality, just let me know. So I get lots of um, inspiration from haute couture, uh, fashion and all that. So this is an account I follow called Loving Haute Couture. And these are handmade shoes by Mark Levelin, and I saw them and I was so like so inspired I thought they were so beautiful they're handmade shoes um, and it's like got this leather that looks like it's hand dyed and I was just in raptures hey Linda glad to see you um, and so this is the one that I decided to take my inspiration from because this is not really um, some colors I would say that I normally use, but I thought it was super elegant. Um, I thought it was just really inspirational. So what I thought I would do is I'd make a little mini color palette for my um, members, for my Behance subscribers, and inspired by this, and then maybe do a little bit of illustration that is also inspired by this. So um, let's get to it. So basically what I did, okay, so I'm going to make mixer brush palettes, wet paint mixer brush palettes, and I'm going to make multicolor impressionist ones. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I screenshot this image and I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. And let me just find my file here really quickly. Um, okay. So first of all, like I want to take the colors from this image and, um, you know, we have Adobe Capture for doing solid color palettes, but this is my little tips and tricks for making your own impressionist and wet brush palettes. So first of all, I've got the image here and the size really doesn't matter. And then I add an adjustment layer because I want to kind of um, usually if it's a photograph of something, it'll kind of dull the colors down a little bit. And so I usually tend to do, um, add a little bit of hue, like, a, or a little bit of saturation, and I tend to up the brightness. So what I do is I make an adjustment layer. And if you haven't done that before, you go to window, um, gosh, what is this thing called here? I, um, adjustments. And then you'll see your adjustments panel. And so I click on here for the hue saturation and I can make, and then when I click on here, it'll add a new, you know, adjustment layer. And that's good because it's non-destructive. So if I click on this, I'll usually um, up the saturation, maybe about plus 10. So there's our original image. 
and there's plus 10 just to add a little extra saturation. Um, ooh, you have snow. Oh my goodness. Okay, and a thaw. Ooh, that is a mess. Um, that's crazy. I wish I could have some snow. That'd be nice. Um, so yes, yeah, so we want to add a little bit of the hue saturation, um, or the, what is it? Saturation, bump that up about plus 10. And then I'll add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And, um, so I've already added that here and I took the brightness up about 11. So if I, you know, 10, maybe five, you know, just depending on your image, but that's just going to help make you have nicer colors. And of course, you know, you can um, literally just take a, a snapshot from the image and use it as is. But I'm going to show you just a couple of tricks when I'm making um, like, like a little mini palette collection from this that's not directly from the image. So after those adjustment layers, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is make a new layer. And then I'm going to hit Command Option Shift uh, three, no four. What is it? Oh no, E. Oh my lord, merge all to a new layer here. Um, what am I even doing? Okay. Oh no. Oh, okay. Merging everything to a new layer. Uh, totally sp uh, spaced on my keyboard shortcut. So it's Command Option Shift and wait e that was funny sometimes it's like muscle memory but then if i think about it um total blank so yeah command option shift command option shift e so that merges everything onto a new layer so there we go and then what i do is of course you know like most of you guys know this so i could take say i could take a, my um what do you call it my rectangular marquee tool i could take it over here and i could hit command m sample those colors in that uh, flower there. I'll just put sample, click OK. And so then I could take any one of my multicolor brushes and like, here's my sample right here that I just took. Um, let me just move it over. So I could just, you know, make my color palettes directly from the image, of course. So let me go to my scrap here. So I could take one of my multicolor brushes pick that image that I just made into a pattern and then all the colors will come out of there. But sometimes I want to finesse it or mix some of the colors and just go a little bit, um, you know, take it up another level. Like for example, if I select this blue, there's not a ton of color variation in that. Um, and so I might want to ramp up the drama just a little bit. So I'm going to show you what I do. So the first thing that I do is I go through that, okay, this, um, this image and I'll sample some areas that I want. And I start with those photo color palettes. So I'll just go around and I'm going to like select this. I'll hit command M. I made it a keyboard shortcut so that it, cause I do this all the time. Or if you don't have that, it's edit define pattern, click OK. And I'll, you know, select some here, select different areas. OK. Um, you know, just having a little fun with it. And those are my images, you know, that's getting the image base. And of course, you can start painting straight from that if you want. But sometimes I might want to combine some of the colors to make more interesting color blends. So let's go to my palettes here. Okay, here we go. Let me open this. Uh, no. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I make them uh, after I've sampled from the images. So I'm going to make a document. It's 250 by 250. This is a great size for the color blending brushes. And I'm going to go to my pattern stamp tool. And just to make this easy here, I've got all of like my images that I've turned into patterns here. So what I'll do is um, I, I showed you guys this yesterday, but I will go to my palette maker brushes and I will link those below afterwards. They're, um, they're linked yesterday. And I will take a palette maker brush that has a color, color jitter of zero. 
um, because I don't want any of the color jitter since I'm making these from images. And then I'll fill in this with my, um, um, using that brush with the multicolor technique and then, you know, using one of the images as my source. But say, for example, I might want to take another image that has a little bit lighter colors in it. And, you know, I might want to add a little bit in there and make some different color blends. So this is what I'm doing, just showing you my tip for when I'm making a fresh little mini palette collection is doing all these steps. So first of all, I do go through, I adjust my image um, and make those adjustment layers, bump up the color a little bit. And then I'll just make this um, document and make my palettes like this. That way I have total control. But of course, you know, if you're just sampling from your own images, you can just, you know, sample directly, you know, of course you can sample directly from the image, but I'm just going to show you maybe a little bit of the difference of like how it might, you know, um, this, how it might look better if, you know, you kind of make your own blends or, or if you might want to. So I'll select directly from this blue here and I'll hit command M and I'll click okay. And then we can go over to like a scrap. All right, let me find just a brush. Um, Modern Impressionist brush number one. So I'll grab this color color palette that I just, or this um, pattern that I just made. So all the colors that are in this image are gonna come out of the brush. But because there wasn't a lot of color jitter in that image that I selected, it's still a, a bit flat. But here, for example, is one that I made with um, tweaking it a little bit and making, and you can see how much more dimensional that is. So that's the reason why we might do that. So we, um, just getting those gorgeous dimensional brush strokes that the impressionist brushes are known for. So that's why I do that. And also, say for example, if we are, Let's say we're making that, we're taking this blue, I'm like flying through the images here. So I sampled this and let's say I wanna make my blue more dramatic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my little color, color palette maker. I'm going to take my palette maker brush with, um, I normally had it on the color jitter zero, but what I'll do, and I'll take that original image, is I might go select one of my other brushes that has a little bit of color jitter, like color jitter one. So if I go to color jitter zero, when I'm pa painting it in here, there's not a lot of color jitter going on at all, just using it straight from the image. But if I go color jitter one, now it's giving us that like nice difference of colors, and then we can get those really rich brush strokes. So this is a tip that, you know, if you're wanting to make your own color palettes that this might help you. But I went ahead and made um, six color palettes like straight from this image. So I'm gonna put them down here. And so these are, I already went ahead and did this for you guys, um, for my subscribers. So I made six multicolor blends for my multicolor impressionist brushes. And then I made, and then I went ahead and turned them into wet paint mixer brush palettes. And so um, a lot of you guys will be familiar with my um, little mini color palette collections or color, uh, color couture, um, some of those things. So this is just gonna be a little mini color palette collection for my subscribers that you guys can use to create your own artwork and everything. So, but I'm showing you how I did it. And then of course, once you've created your color palette for your multicolor brush, you can, then you can go ahead and go edit, define pattern, and then click okay. So that's if you wanna make your own color palette. So I am gonna close this. I will save, save it. And then here, just a little refresher. Um, if you're making your wet, excuse me, wet brush palettes, um, I go to, it's really the same process except um, 
So I'm going to take the color palette that I just made with like a cream and I'm going to take my palette maker cut color jitter zero and then I'm just going to paint like this and create a little wet brush palette. So now we're going to have all those yummy colors in there, all that jitter, all that gorgeousness, which is going to make our brush stroke so much more beautiful. So we just do like that. Um, so I went ahead here and just showed you the ones that I have already made. And then I can grab a wet brush. So I'm going to grab the wet brush. I have it saved over here. Um, yeah, like uh, I think this is from my wet paint studio brush number 18. So I'm going to option click and load that multi, you know, color blend up into my brush and let's find the, okay, find the thing. And then we can get those gorgeous, pretty strokes like that. So nice and pretty. Um, and let's see our wet palette. So let's get like an orange. So we can blend them together, make some really nice sort of strokes and have all that gorgeous blending going on. So that is that is all of it to making the palettes. But the good thing is, is that I went ahead and made this palette for you guys. So if you're my um, Behance subscriber um, or if you're a legacy on Patreon, you can download them straight away and uh, start playing with it. But I think that the colors are just beautiful. So I'm going to just show, you know, here you can see we've just got those really nice colors, really rich, you know, going in there and you can blend them, you know, have, have some fun, create some, some interesting things with that. That's with the wet ones. And let me just show you the, um, gosh, the, here's, like a nice soft sort of, um, what do you call it? Uh, impressionist brush. Like, I don't know why my brain is sort of fry today, but I think that these colors are really nice. They're so pretty. And I mean, of course we're, you know, taking them from some couture inspiration. So I know that it looked really pretty, but we can make some really elegant things with them. And yeah, so that's the inspiration. So we've got, so I made wet, six wet pressure, wet, wet palettes, six impressionist palettes. And then I went ahead and made some solid color swatches. And if you want to do that, um, a really nice, easy way to do that is, um, well, you can just stamp like, um, take your color picker and sample from the image. I think that's, that's probably the fastest just click on here and then click plus and add a color swatch so that's a good way to do it you can also do the um oh gosh the in the library you can on your with your layer selected you can go to extract from image and you can make a color theme from the what is it the I forget what this plugin is called. Oh, Capture. So, you know, you can play around and do, you know, pick some colors from your images and then save it to the CC library. So you can do that. The only thing is, I think that for me, that's a little bit slower than doing it directly. Um, although that the benefit is that it'll be available on, you know, anywhere where you have your library. So that could be available, you know, directly on your um, Fresco or things like that. But if I go save to CC libraries, um, it saves, I have to close that out and then you'll have your cult color themes here and tapping on it will put it in the, um, you know, the foreground color, but there's not kind of a way to like pull it directly into the swatches. I have to like, click on it or, you know, tap one of them, click on my foreground color and then, you know, add to swatches. So I just think it's a little bit faster to select them directly from the photo. And yeah, so making a nice color palette with that. 
So this is our muse, this is our inspiration. And just to kind of, um, you know, practice, get better, what have you. Sometimes, you know, I always think it's good to, if you're getting direct, you know, inspiration from fashion or something like that, you know, put your own little twist on it. But sometimes as a challenge, I do like trying to be, you know, directly influenced by something like this. And, you know, especially if it's a different medium altogether and then see if I can paint it because people paint, you know, fashion illustration all the time and it's not necessarily derivative. Um, but, you know, it's a good challenge, I think, to, uh, I think it's a good challenge to play with. So that's what I did. And so that's how I'm going to show you my little tips and tricks for creating kind of a cool um, floral motif from this. So we've got our wet palettes here. Let's just delete that layer. I'm going to save that. And we've got our little sort of inspo. And I've also made you guys, here's what I was working on. So I think it's looking really rich and delicious. Um, but here is a demo starter thing. So I'm gonna show you kind of how I built this up. And let's go and do window arrange two up vertical. So we can see our gorgeous muse here, our beautiful flower muse. Don't know which one I wanna focus on. Well, that's good enough. Okay, so, and then we'll see how we came to this. And I think it turned out, it's turning out nice. It's not necessarily like all done, but um, we've got, I've, I had a good start on it. So the first thing I did is I've got a background. So what I did was I looked at one of these flowers and I did my super duper terrific, gorgeous sketch here. <laughs> and I thought I would do really kind of inspired by one of, um, like this one here. So I thought I would put a blue background. And then what I did was draw out basic shapes um, in a, the color wasn't terribly important, but drawing out these basic shapes um, on separate layers. And we're really going to use those shapes for um, kind of not a, as a guide. So what I did was I grabbed the, one of my brushwork brushes. So I grabbed actually, I think it was, um, I think I saved it here. No, that's, oops, that's not it. Undo. No, no. I grabbed like brush number six and just a basic one. So all of my brushwork brushes, um, you know, they'll all operate as a pretty classic, one color brush, uh, you know, if you do full pressure, they'll have, you know, kind of different sort of rough outlines. Where they're different is if you do the light pressure, so they have different, um, you know, all that texture inside them. But for this instance, it doesn't really matter what brush you use because we're really just making the outlines. So let me cut that and zoom out. Okay, so, I made these basic shapes and what I really like in that, um, in these beautiful, I think it's kind of, I think they're made of fabric or leather is how they're like twisting and a very twisted. So I thought for this that the um, wet paint mixer brushes would be really fun to play with that. So we are going to, let's hide our sketch here. And let me, okay, let's just do, let's start with this one here. And so what I'm gonna do is I've got my selection tool. Oh, and it's set right now to auto select group. So I'm gonna set, set it to layer. I'm gonna click one of these, um, click that shape. So I'm going to command and click on that, uh, that layer to make that a selection. And then I'll just hide that layer. I'm not even gonna do a clipping mask. Um, I just want to use that layer as a guide making a selection. So I'm gonna make a new layer. And then I'm going to get my 
mixer brush tool over here and if you don't see it it might be hiding underneath the brush tool but I use it all the time so I've got its own little space here and I'm going to go grab hmm, where am I grabbing my wet paint studio and I'm going to grab brush 18 that's the one that I used so if I it's already loaded with some gold I'm going to go over to my wet palette and I think did I have a dark mm. okay I'll just start with this kind of a peachy color here so I'm going to option click to load that color up into my brush and then I'm just going to I might need to right bracket my arrow if it's looking to um, the brush is too big or too small I use right and left brackets to change the size and I'm going to just fill that in I might use some of the darker color so of course when I'm um, sampling uh, I'll just go back and forth maybe even some lighter and kind of play with this and just fill that up mainly I'm not worried that it's perfect now the one thing with these wet brushes is that if you keep going over in it over it it might lose some of that nice those nice um, it might get kind of mixed too much depending on the brush so what I can do is I'll make a new layer above that and I might take maybe a, the darker make a new stroke here so I want to make sure that we have some nice gorgeous strokes in there that's cool and then once I get it kind of how I, I'm happy with I can merge those two layers that I just made so I'm going to right click and merge layers and I can you know kind of pull a little bit more so you know you can kind of just have some fun with that just getting those beautiful streakiness and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect it and then what I might do is go around the outside because I don't want to see those um, like the streaks coming straight from that and even I can just let's see here let's see what I did here uh, I think what I will do is go select this again and then you might have to make the brush size smaller and then just kind of go around the edges and you know just pull play but that's making it look better that those streaks just don't go harsh to the edge so play with it you know if it you know you can always redo it whatever I'm just going to leave that one as it is this one turned out okay this one I've got a little it's a little bit messier but you know I'm not going to worry too much about it so and then just kind of pull some of those colors in that's like that was nice as you can kind of you know finesse it a little bit so there we've got our back petal and it's looking pretty pretty soon I think it's looking a little bit more muddy because I brought in that darker but we've got it okay so um, you know that's a good start hey God to leave glad that you could join so happy to see you um, so yeah so we're so basically this flower is just repeating that process for the leaves and just playing around until it's nice so you know what I'm gonna move this one over here so this can give me a better like reference for the one that I did okay so let's do the same thing over here all right so we are going to command click wait no select this okay so we've got that front layer we are going to command click on that layer to make a selection of it now we can hide it and let's see here so let's get, and we're using all that wet paint studio 
brush number 18. So I don't change the brush at all. So I might just do um, a stroke like that in the middle. I can get the, and get maybe a, a lighter color on the sides. And, you know, pull it. Let's see here. Maybe grab my orange again. And now we kind of want to like mix them up a little bit. So I can just keep blending until I'm, I'm happy with it. This one looked a little bit better, but I'm gonna grab my light. There we go. Sometimes you can just keep pulling, blending until you get something nice. I might wanna take my brush size up a little bit. Ah, where'd it go? Oops. So we're really getting some of those nice sort of streaks in there. And, you know, it's not perfect, but whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect this. And then I think I will take my peach. And now to see how it goes around to the edge. So now we're kind of want to like, um, you know, go around the edges so we don't have those sharp ending of the streak there. So I'm going to right click and just kind of blend a bit. And yeah. So I'm being a little bit precious with it, which I wasn't really necessarily before, but you know. And also I think um, sometimes how I got those nice blends, like I did in here, is I made one layer, I made a separate layer above it, and I did the merging before I blended. So. But if I wanted to make this one a little bit lighter, to be honest, I could just do um, a color overlay, like put a white color overlay over it and then set it to like overlay or lighten. So, you know, that's just also a little trick you can do if you need something to be just a little bit lighter, light overlay or screen, but I think overlay is just generally better. Um, and I'll click OK. So, you know, a little bit nicer over here. It's always nicer when I do it before, when I'm doing it live, you know, maybe not so much. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And we are all about trying to um, do it, um, non, uh, save our work, back up, all this. You never know what might happen. And one thing that you might do is like say, I like this, this color here. Okay, I made this as my color palettes, but say, okay, I need something a little bit lighter than this. Well, all you have to do, if you need to make another color palette, just make a new layer on top of your document. Go grab your color palette brush. Grab, you know, your orange here. Maybe go grab some of that cream. Put some of that in there. And now we're going to have a lighter color palette. So let's go back here, option click, sample it. And now we've got a nice lighter, um, another blend. So it's just, you, you can make your blends just that easy, you know, and just that fast. So have a bit of fun with it and, you know, don't worry too much. So that's cool. Whatever. You can always keep moving it until, but I like the creating those like nice streaks and everything. So let's go over here. Oh, and one little thing that I will show you is that um, I, one thing that made it a nice um, effect is adding a little bit of 
dimension to, or to add a little bit of dimension is it's just adding a little bit of a drop shadow between these layers. So I can click on this layer here, make a new layer above it. And I went ahead and I'll, I'll attach this for my subscribers. I just made a soft, um, soft darkening brush. And so up here, you know, you might want to do this too. I keep some basic brushes at the top of my, um, always at the top here, just some basic smooth, whatever kind of brushes. So this one is just a circle with no hardness. I've got the spacing up a little bit. That's it. And then I went ahead and saved the brush settings to have a 51% opacity and black loaded. So if I paint like this, it's just a nice soft darkening. And then usually what I will do is I will just change the blend mode of that layer to linear, um, linear burn. And I think that looks better than um, multiply, to be honest, especially if you're working on light colors because multiply can really dull things out. So I'm going to just put it on linear burn and the opacity to 50%. But if I kind of go in there and I change it to multiply, okay, well here it's not that big of a difference, but sometimes it is. And linear burn looks better on lighter colors and it really keeps that color very nice compared to the, having the blend mode be multiply. So I definitely recommend that. Oh, hey, sweet, um, Sri, Sri Khan, nice to see you. Thanks for saying hi. Sorry, my just trying to like make the, the pronunciations and stuff at the same time I'm like going, going on. All right, so as you can see, we're building up the flower. It's getting there. So let's just kind of fly through here. Won't worry that it's perfect. And then, you know, what I did was I put some accents there, but I think it looks cool. I'm like, it's not 100% like finished or anything, but I, um, it just shows what you can do with like a new color palette. So I think that you could do some really fun things with this app, with these color palettes, abstract, what have you. And the good thing is, is that I already made the color palettes for you. So you can just have some fun with that. Um, so I love, I love, you know, and it's a decision that you don't have to make. So you know that you're like, oh, ready-made color palettes, ready-made color blends. Perfect. I don't, you know, I love, I, I like how it looks. And I don't have to make any of the color decisions. So, you know, just trying to make the, the life a little bit easy. So let's select this layer and I'm going to make a new layer above it. Let's get this layer, command, click, make that selection, turn off that layer. Let us get some nice creamy going on here. So I'm going to put some creamy brush stroke in here. And then maybe some darker creamy. So it's really kind of looking nice. So it's pretty good almost as is. Let me go grab some orange. Now I can't really see the orange here. So what I'm going to do, make a new layer above that. Let's add a little bit of orange maybe inside here like this. Okay, now I can merge those layers. But I really need to make a keyboard shortcut of that. That's probably, there probably is one. Let's, uh, I'm gonna leave it selected while I pull a little bit. Oh, and now what I might do is I'm gonna take the color out of my brush by clicking this thing here. So that way it's just gonna move the colors um, that I have around a little bit. So we're making just a little bit that's okay whatever all right let's deselect it now I'm going to go around the edges a little bit so I can click here to load that color back up and of course you can work non-destructively so I could duplicate this layer and then hide it and then kind of go around it like this so I think that make can make it look a bit nicer and it's got those really you know kind of um twisty sort of streaky things that the original had a lot so that was cool so we're gonna hit save and then let's 
just pop on the last two petals, add a little shadows, and we'll be ready. So anyway, let's click on here. All right. And we're going to command click. All right, so we've got a new layer. This one we're gonna have maybe, I think I'll start with the darker one. So for this one, I'm pretty much exploring the, um, the wet brushes, but I, as soon as I'm done with the, um, as soon as I'm done with the stream, I'm going to put the resources available for the, um, for the subscribers and everything. And so uh, if you create something with it, be sure to tag me because I would like to see what you guys make with it. I think it could be really pretty. All right, so now I've done, mm, take my color out, maybe smush it around a little bit, make it a little bit, little bit more. All right, that's, we'll just say good enough. We've got that, I might just, and of course you can always, um, this one's not turning out so perfect, but whatever. Uh, you can always adjust the wet settings, you know, if it's too, um, you know, it's not blending enough or whatever. So you can always play with that, but I'm just using the brush as is. Um, oh, hey, um, Gwynwich, Gwyn Gwynwich. Nice to see you from Brazil. Yay. Loving that. All right. And then I'm going to add the shadows in in a minute, and I think it'll make it look pretty nice. So let's get this bad boy over here. Wait, no. Let's add. Oh, no, I don't have my selection tool. Okay, let's get this one. But having those shapes as a guide really helps me, especially with these. Um... Oh, yeah. I don't have any colors loaded up into it, especially with the wet brushes because they can be a little bit bold. So I think that you can, it kind of tames them in a little bit. Um, so I, I think that's, I think that's a nice way to do it. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I'm just going to kind of leave that. Now what I can do, let's just duplicate it. I'll get a little backup here and then maybe turn off my color. So I can just kind of just blend it a little bit and get those colors going. Okay, we'll hit save. And then let's pop the last one here, right here. All right, make a new layer. And we're gonna make this one light. Let me just zoom out here. I'll start with Oh, and if I had, if I dropped the color out of it, now if I go back to click and add that color, it's not gonna load up. You've gotta click that button again to get that color again. So that's just a little hot tip for me to you. Um, just a little tip, Rooney. Okay. All right, so that's pretty light. All right, let's do it. Okay, we're getting there, pretty pretty similar. And so now I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow. So what I'll do is I've already added that shadow here. So I'm gonna click on this layer and then I'll make a new layer above it. I'm gonna grab that, um, that shadow brush that I already made. And as you can see, it just, I can make a clipping mask, but really I can just you know, eyeball it, but you can clip it to that layer if you want to. That's probably smart, I guess. So I'll do like this. And then I'll take that opacity down, blend mode to linear burn. That's cool. Um, here, I'm gonna go underneath this one. I'm not gonna make it a clipping mask layer because there's two layers underneath it and it's just too much. So I'm just gonna go linear burn, 50%, grab my brush and just kind of draw some, some stuff in there. So we got a little bit of depth. And then also, Let's see here, we want to, what I really want is this piece to go above that. There we go. So then I can draw my um, shadows all on the same layer. There we go. So we're getting there somewhat. 
So it's a little twisty, turny sort of. I think it kind of honors the spirit of that, that original flower a lot. And it was a good exercise for me because sometimes I, I'm a bit lazy to do push myself for illustrating things like this is I wouldn't say realistic, but <laughs> you know, as realistic as I get. But it's good. We have to get better every day. So that's the idea. And then the last thing that I did was I made this um rather than like doing kind of like a vine sort of thing um motif. So instead of doing like that in green like it would normally be I thought I would do it in blue because we're doing that really you know gorgeous color scheme so I don't really want to introduce any new colors so I'm going to make a new layer above that and for this I'm not really going to need to use the the shape of that I think I'll just freehand it with my brush so I'm going to go get I don't know if it's the lighter color or the darker I'm going to go let's go here see how it goes well, yeah, it's pretty okay. It's pretty tone on tone. So I'm just going to take the opacity of my guide and then just draw like a nice stroke here. Oh, I could turn my smoothing up. That would be helpful because I don't necessarily have the smoothest hand. And I could even go grab a darker color and do like blending that a little bit. It's pretty the same though. So. Anyway, we've got a little bit of that there. All right, let's turn off the, turn off our guide and then let's do one over the top here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I turn off my guide. And I think it looks better if I do the lighter color. So I just did a little like this. Hi, hello, where'd you go? But I'm really in love with, like, I don't normally love this kind of teal blue, but I'm kind of crushing on this color palette. And at first when I saw that post, I was thinking that I wanted to do the typical iris colored one, but I was just like, oh, I need something new, something different. So there we've got that motif. And then just to accent it a little bit, um, I went underneath it. And I created these fur type brushes, textural fur sort of um, brushes in another tutorial. Uh, let me just show you really quick. So they're already available to subscribers. Um, when I was playing with some, where did I play with them? Oh, here, velvety and furry dimensional brushes. So you can really have some fun with that. So they're on this one here. Let me hide that. And so what I did was I just loaded it up with the dark blue and it creates this like really cool, if we zoom in here, sort of a velvety texture. I thought that was really pretty. A pretty way to offset that I um, offset that sort of motif so you know just play with that just kind of freehand it um, and even you could put a little I, I think on the other ones I added these like dimensional um, no I don't need to add them there you can add like a little bit of a soft drop shadow to give it like a little bit extra dimensionality, but I don't think um, linear burn, that's not so bad. There's like a little bit of a drop shadow, but I think it looks a little bit more elegant just playing with that sort of, um, that sort of uh, texture. So as you can see here, you know, if you go different directions, you're going to get, you know, it's like kind of like velvet or velour. So you get those nice things. And then I just played with um, putting some of the orange behind that. So I used my impressionist brush. And so I went and grabbed some of that orange. And I actually... This one is a watercolor brush from my 
uh, it's a watercolor brush from my brushwork collection. And normally those are meant to be in one, like they're one color brushes, but some of them actually can, uh, you can use them with the multicolor, I, I realize just, you know, stumbling on it on chance. And so I kind of had some fun with that. So I'm gonna, and, and I love it. It's like a beautiful watercolor brush, but you get all those like lovely colors coming out. So that's pretty it, but I'm gonna show you some of the color different, um, oh gosh, like the brush collection, like different brushes that you can play with the color palette. So I think you could do some really fun abstract things with this. Um, but you've already got your color palette all set, you know, everything's ready. So you just get to have fun, you know, and make something with this color blend. But let me just get, let me just play a little bit with the impressionist brushes just to show you the feather couture fantasies. I just, I played with that yesterday's um, live stream. Let me just zoom in so we can see the gorgeousness in these brushes. So here's like a feather couture fantasy. Let me just, okay, I made these all out of order. Like I moved these all out of order. So you can, I'm just going to show you the color palettes. That we've got the pink or orange, dark orange. You get all this, you know, nice colors coming out. Very, um, you know, very rich and dimensional. So, you know, you could just make some easy backgrounds just using brush strokes, you know, so you don't have to paint anything. But the, let me just grab an orange one. So lots of possibilities. There's some nice feather. Before. I just love those, like that kind of peach and cream against that blue. I think it's absolutely elegant. This one, you really can see the feathers in that. That's Some of them are like very subtle and, um, but the whole collection of the feather, feather couture fantasies is very, uh, artistic and I think that you can do a lot of stuff with it which I kind of showed yesterday on yesterday's stream um let's get the couture fiber those are fun so you can make some sort of fun layering so a lot of possibilities playing with those. So they work with, so the color palettes will work with any, of course, like any of the multicolor brushes. Um, let's see what we got. Tie dye. It's my, I can't remember my favorite tie dye brushes. But maybe I'll do some blends of these as well. So Anyway, as soon, whenever I'm done, um, I will post uh, the resources and all that for my Behance subscribers. So a lot of fun things we can do here. They can use with any of the brush collections. Ooh, I'm thinking the floral, no, the tool couture would be nice. I like these ones here. So, but now that I'm like kind of um, checking it out, I might want to mix some of these just a little bit more to have a little bit more drama. So we've got the color palettes and all of that. So that's pretty it. So I think that we did an all right job today. And just for reference here, this is our, this was our original inspiration. And then I made the wet palettes, the dry palettes, impressionist palettes and solid palettes that are inspired by that. And I think I'll make a little kind of a graphic, you know, so you can have a reference. So I'll be adding that to the um, Behance library. And then um, also, if you haven't checked it out, yesterday's stream was really fun. And I made these really fun flowers using almost exclusively the uh, 
feather couture brushes. So that was really fun. Oh, well, thank you so much, Tammy. Glad that you liked it. Thank you so much for watching, Linda. Oh my goodness. All right, well, I'll let you guys get on with your day and have a nice one. And then I'm gonna try to pop on here tomorrow. Um, the schedule's on my website, but I'm gonna keep it, sh the last two days have been long ones, so I'm gonna keep it short tomorrow, I swear. Um, make it short and fun. So thanks everybody for joining in and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, glad you liked the inspiration, gotta leave. Thank you so much. Anyway, and if you guys have any questions, just always, you know, message me on, on the chat or DM me anytime. So I will see you guys later. Thanks.